Hi, this is Dr. Mary Kathleen Figaro coming to you from the Thyroid Channel. Thanks for tuning in. If this is your first time, please be aware this is for educational purposes. If you have specific complaints or concerns, please contact a local endocrinologist. So today we'll be discussing the, the second treatment for hyperthyroidism. Last week we discussed radioactive iodine and this week we'll be discussing um, surgery for hyperthyroidism. What might happen after you get diagnosed with hyperthyroidism is that you, an endocrinologist, will decide what would be the best treatment for you. Often that is radioactive iodine or methimazole, which we'll discuss next week, but this week we'll discuss surgery. Surgery is by far the most drastic reason, uh, drastic treatment for hyperthyroidism. But why might you choose surgery? Well, my patients who've uh, discussed surgery with me and decided on surgery often have a very large gland and it's hard to breathe, hard to sleep, and even though they've been on, on uh, tapazole or, or methimazole or PTU, they haven't gotten their symptoms under control for some time period. That's too much for them. That's number one reason. The second reason they might choose to have surgery is that um, they have nodules in the thyroid uh, in addition to having hyperthyroidism. So the entire gland is large and they have nodules inside the thyroid and a nodule might be producing more hormone than the rest of the thyroid. Well, the best way to take care of that is to have surgery and remove uh, the side where the nodule is or the entire thyroid if there are multiple nodules on both sides. So that's the second reason. The third reason you might choose to have surgery is that you have significant thyroid eye disease. So much eye disease that you may have had surgery for the thyroid eye disease or be very gravely ill with it. If that's the case, uh, you might want to undergo surgery because it's a quick way of resolving the hyperthyroidism. You do not have to worry about uh, worsening the hyperthyroidism as you might for radioactive iodine and it won't take forever to get better as it might uh, with tapazole or PTU. And by forever, I may mean two or three weeks. It may be too much for you to, to adjust to, or you've been trying for several months to get treated with, uh, with uh, tapazole or methimazole, and it has not worked for you. So those are the three main reasons people uh, choose surgery. And so what is involved in surgery? Well, first of all, whoever has diagnosed you and has chosen to uh, send you to surgery would have to engage a, a surgeon who is very uh, competent at taking out thyroids. It may seem to you that it would be simple to take out a thyroid, it's so visible, it's right under your skin, but there are a lot of important structures in the neck. And if you have surgery from a person who, or a surgeon who is not as experienced, especially when you have Graves' disease, which makes the thyroid gland very bloody and difficult to manage during surgery, then you may be more likely to undergo complications of surgery. And what are those complications? Certainly, you can have damage to the nerve, the right recurrent laryngeal nerve that goes to your thyroid, and excuse me, goes to your vocal cord, and determines whether you you sing beautifully or can talk wonderfully. So that might be one complication. Another is that there are four glands called the parathyroid glands, two on each side of the thyroid. And if the thyroid is specially enlarged and bloody and inflamed with hyperthyroidism, that makes it more likely that you would have injury to these glands which control your calcium and can cause secondary hypoparathyroidism. It's complicated words, meaning that you do not have enough effect of these four glands, especially if all four are taken out by mistake. So that's the second most uh, common complication. And certainly if you have surgery, you can have seromas, infections, other things, large pockets of fluids, and, um, and just a bad uh, cosmetic outcome. So those are major uh, complications of, of surgery and you would have to discuss that with your surgeon. You would wanna know two important things a surgeon, what their complication rates are, and how many of these surgeries they do per year. Since any competence in a surgical procedure largely depends on how often the surgeon performs the procedure, and the competence of the surgeon can also be evaluated on whether he or she has a high or low complication rate. So those are two things you'd want to discuss with anyone who is going to do surgery for you for hyperthyroidism. So, 
you have deci decided with your endocrinologist that you need surgery because of major three reasons we discussed. You have decided that you are going with this surgeon, you have met him or her, and you have determined their complication rate and the number of procedures they do, and it's greater than 20 or some respectable number, and they seem competent. So that's the second um, uh, process. The third is that scheduling the actual surgical date. And so you want to make it so that you have enough time period to recover from surgery, at least one to two weeks, at most six weeks, depending how um, sensitive you are to surgical procedures. And you have determined that um, you have um, you have uh, multiple uh, people to take care of you to help you recover from surgery and you're ready for surgery okay what happens when you go to surgery there are two ways that surgery happens it can happen in an outpatient setting or it can happen in an inpatient setting if it happens in the hospital then what you have is um, you stay overnight uh, after a surgery and you're monitored to make sure your calcium is right and that your hyper your parathyroid glands are not injured and you're monitored to make sure that you um, have no excess bleeding because it's a very bloody gland and then you're sent home to recu recuperate and then um, once you've recuperated you have to be well while you're recuperating and the day after surgery you have to be started on thyroid medication because you've lost your gland and um, you need replacement so the steps for deciding on surgery for hyperthyroidism are First, to determine it is the right procedure for you, to determine if the surgeon is competent and appropriate for the surgery, to have the surgery, and then to quickly get retreated to make sure that you do not become hypothyroid. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe, please subscribe below, and new videos every Friday.